Hi, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. In this video T, we're finally going to take a look at what controls respiration. In other words, we're going to look at the respiratory centers in the brain. In the brain, we're going to see respiratory centers present both in the medulla and in the pons. In other words, in the brain stem. We're also going to take a look at chemoreceptors and other receptors that can impact ventilation. But before we do that, let's go through some definitions of terms. First of all, many of the terms that we'll come across have the root PNEA in them. And this always refers to breath. You've heard of people suffering from sleep apnea. Apnea means without breath. Literally, people stop breathing, usually while sleeping. Eupnea refers to true breath. You referring to true, think, so, think of the word eukaryote, um, which refers to a true nucleus. So that is the normal breathing. Hyperpnea refers to faster and deeper breathing, faster and deeper breathing, which is not exactly the same as hyperventilation. Hyperventilation really refers to the fact that we're breathing so fast that we're literally blowing off too much carbon dioxide. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is our carbon dioxide levels that drive our breathing, not oxygen levels. Carbon dioxide plays a very important role in our breathing. And when we hyperventilate, we are literally getting rid of too much carbon dioxide, which has consequences. So there's a slight difference between hyperpnea and hyperventilation. You can breathe faster and deeper without losing too much carbon dioxide. That would be hyperpnea. Hypoventilation means that we're not blowing enough carbon, blowing off enough carbon dioxide. Hypercapnia refers to high levels of carbon dioxide. High levels of carbon dioxide while hypocapnia is just the opposite. And then panting is typically the rapid breathing that you see in animals, uh, which we don't typically see so much in humans. In our brainstem, we have respiratory centers in the medulla and in the pons. We're going to start here with the medullary respiratory centers because they're responsible for setting the pace of our breathing, kind of like the pacemaker cells in our heart set the pace of depolarization in our heart and therefore our heart rate. Similar principle here. So they create this rhythmicity to where at rest we take about two seconds to inspire and we take about three seconds to expire. Now, we see in the medulla two different kinds of groups of neurons that form our respiratory centers. We have the dor dorsal respiratory group, or the DRG, and the ventral respiratory group, or the VRG. And they are very much regulated by carbon dioxide, oxygen, and pH levels in the blood, as we'll see momentarily. Most of the time, we'll talk about the DRG. The dorsal respiratory group in the medulla gets its name because it sits on the posterior aspect of the medulla, while the ventral respiratory group, the VRG, sits more anteriorly or ventrally. The dorsal respiratory group really regulates when we inspire, and therefore, this group of neurons is going to be able to activate our diaphragm, 
and our external intercostal muscles. Remember, these are our inspiratory muscles. Our VRG is usually mostly involved with forced breathing, and therefore it's going to activate these additional respiratory muscles that can allow for forced inspiration or forced expiration. We'll talk about the respiratory centers in the pons or the so-called pontine respiratory group in just a little while. The dorsal respiratory group or the DRG located in the medulla is often referred to as our inspiratory center. Remember, it really controls those external intercostals and the diaphragm via their corresponding nerves. So the inspiratory center or the DRG is very much involved in maintaining a very constant breathing rhythm at rest. We refer to that as quiet breathing, that upnea. Our respiratory rate at rest tends to be about 12 to 15 breaths per minute. So this is how it works. The DRG neurons become stimulated, and this is going to stimulate our inspiratory muscles, that is those external and intercostals and diaphragm to contract, for about two seconds. And after two seconds, the DRG neurons become inactivated, and therefore those muscles are not stimulated to relax, to contract anymore, and they relax. That takes about three seconds. At the end of this, we see that our DRG neurons become stimulated again. The ventral respiratory group is mostly involved in forced breathing, including inspiration and expiration, but again, forced breathing. This brings us then to the pons, and in the pons we have the PRG, or the pontine respiratory groups. There are two. One is called the apneustic center, and the other one is called the pneumotaxic center. And together, the pontine respiratory group is going to help make the transition between inspiration and expiration much more smoothened out such that you don't take just the breath in and then expire, right? I hope you heard my gasping like breathing. So these pontine respiratory groups can actually change how deep we breathe and how fast we breathe. And they do that by interacting with the medullary centers. One of the centers in the pontine respiratory group is called the apneustic center. And its role is to stimulate the DRG such that our depth of breathing is changed. We can change our depth of breathing by contracting our diaphragm and our external intercostals more strongly. And you might recall from learning about the graded responses of skeletal muscle that if we recruit more motor units, we're going to see stronger contractions. And sim a similar principle applies here. So we can increase our depth of inhalation by recruiting more respiratory motor units of the diaphragm and of the external intercostal muscles. While the apneustic pontine center stimulated or activated the DRG, hereby controlling the depth of inspiration, our second pontine center, called the pneumotaxic center, inhibits the DRG. And as it inhibits the DRG, it's going to relax our inspiratory muscles, and this is therefore going to impact the rate of respiration. And remember, the rate of respiration refers to how many breaths we take per minute. So if we change how long the DRG is activated or how quickly it's turned off, 
we're going to then also impact our respiratory rates. So in summary, we have medullary centers and we have pontine centers. There are two medullary centers. The uh, dorsal respiratory group really sets the pace of our breathing by turning, um, by stimulating our inspiratory muscles or relaxing them. We also have a ventral respiratory group which is primarily involved in forced breathing. The pontine respiratory group also consists of two centers. The apneustic center impacts the depth of our breathing, while the pneumotaxic center is going to change our respiratory rates. 